Gun Show. Hello. Last year we did a story about Inga Helborg, a Minnesota farm girl who proved to a prison board that the self-respect that comes with trust is a great factor in the rehabilitation of criminals. Now we're going to let Ben Cabot, the prison psychiatrist, tell you more about Inga. Well, Inga is still struggling to make a go of her farm. And her boys, as she calls the convicts who work for her, are still struggling to make a go of themselves. Come on, Gabbard! Oh, save your breath, Yessie. I get them. Give. And my job as prison psychiatrist still gives me an excuse for seeing Inga quite often. Come in. Oh, you have good news. I can tell by your face. Yes, I have. How are you, Inga? Fine, just fine. Is it the parole for me, Mr. Cabot? Well, not this time, Pete, but I've got one for Frank O'Neill. Ah. Oh, good for Frank. Oh, he's a good man. And he's a fine worker, too. With Frank leaving us, Miss Helberg, you'll be shorthanded for the planting. Unless the prison sends us another trustee, and they will. Well, at the present moment, there's nobody I can honestly recommend. No one you can trust? I'm sorry, Inga. Then why do you call them trustees? <laughs> well, what I mean is there's red tape to go through. It'll take two or three weeks. Oh, I see. Speaking of red, we've been going over the books, and Miss Helberg's in a real bad spot. Oh, don't worry, Pete. We make out all right. That's what she always says. What do you mean by a bad spot, Pete? Well, look here. First, there was the farm note, paid in full. Then the accident in the Jeep, and Charlie's hospital bills. Now you see why there's no money left to buy seed. B but I manage. Miss Helborg. Yeah? Oh, hi, Mr. Hi, Cabot. Charlie. Miss Helborg, when I was in town just now, I spotted that car that forced me off the road. Oh, Charlie, how many times must I tell you when you come to the front door, you knock? Yes, manners. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, you got the license oh, number? Sure thing, sure thing. I checked at the police station, and they said the guy's name is Ross Morton, Jr. Oh. Well, I know his father slightly owns the Morton office building downtown. Put the more gas in the yeep, Charlie. Right. Yeah. Inga? Yeah. What'd you have in mind? Ross Morton Jr. is responsible for Charlie's accident. So I go now to collect four repairs to yeep and Charlie's doctor's bills. This way I get the money for planting. Oh, you see, Pete, sometimes the Lord answers my prayers before I even ask. I go to change my clothes. I am sorry to bring you this trouble, Mr. Morton, but I have spent the money I saved for planting on fixing a beep and the doctor bills. And it is not right for me to borrow from someone else if I can get my own money back. Hit-run driving is a very serious charge. Hiya, Dad. I thought I told Dewey to keep you out of here. I'm sorry, Dad, but it's urgent. I don't care how urgent it is. <laughs> I've got to talk to you. Uh, I wait outside. Oh, no, that isn't necessary. It'll, it'll only take a minute. Oh. This is my son, Miss Helborg. Oh. How do you do? My pleasure. Miss Helborg has a claim against you for three, four hundred dollars for hit-run driving. Me? Uh, no, no. Uh, he did not hit. He ran. He forced Charlie off the road. Where? When? Off the river road. Six weeks ago. Do you deny it? Deny it? Oh, no, no, I don't deny it. I was in a hurry, that's all. I meant to go back later. Oh, I, I had a, a, a lady with me, and uh, she didn't want to get involved. A lady? Oh, now, Dad, you know. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Uh, sir, about my money. Well, it's uh, really quite simple, Miss Holbrook. I haven't a cent, that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah, that's why I am here, too. Very well, Ross. Miss Helborg will take your car as security. Oh, no, sir. I don't need a car. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad, but I took a loan out on the car right if you gave it to me. There you are, Miss Helborg. As usual, my son is two jumps ahead of everybody. What would you suggest? I suggest he earn the money to pay what he owe me. Are you kidding? With my reputation, who's going to give me a job? I will. I need a new hired hand on my farm. 
Me, a hired hand? And I will keep your wages to pay for repair on Yip and Charlie's doctor bills. <laughs> You're certainly not serious. Oh, yeah, I am serious. Well, I think I ought to be given some sort of choice in the matter. But of course you have choice. You can either work on my farm or go to Yale for leaving scene of accident. But you yourself must choose. Dad! I think she means what she says, Ross. I would suggest you go home and pack some work clothes. Okay, Miss Helberg, you win. For the time being. I hope you can make a man of him. Oh, no. That I cannot do. I can only give him opportunity to make man of himself. Well, let me say I'm grateful that you're giving him the opportunity. Good. I'm glad you are. Then maybe you can do favor for me. I might have known there'd be a catch in all this. What is it you want? I would like you to advance me $312.76. I will pay you back out of your son's wages. Well, isn't that an unusual amount of money to arrive at? It's exactly the amount I need to buy rye and barley seed and to rent seed drill. It's because of accident I have no money. And it's planting time now. I see. But you yourself admit that the accident was my son's fault, not mine. Therefore, I must refuse. Oh. Very well. You have my sympathy, of course. And do you have mine, sir? How so? If I cannot buy seed, I cannot run farm. And if I am forced to shut down farm, your son has no opportunity to make man of himself. If your son does not make man of himself, you have my sympathy. $312.76? Yeah, that is correct. Just a minute, Miss Helbaugh. Come on, Marlon. Come on. Okay. Oh, thank you. Here are keys to you, Charlie. Oh, come in. Come in. Uh, this is Ross Morton. Uh, this is Charlie Van. And this is Pete Whitaker. And Bill Casey. And Hank Billings. And uh, uh, Harlan Brown over there. Uh, Ross is going to be working with us. Good. We could use some more help. You bet. You know, it seems to me I've seen your face somewhere before. Well, it wouldn't have surprised me. My picture was in an awful lot of post office walls before they finally caught up with me. <laughs> Charlie. You mean you've been in jail? Sonny, I am in jail. Hey, stupid. Retention farm, remember? And this is a prison farm. Oh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Cabot wants us to call it experimental retention farm. And we do <laughs> to keep Mr. Cabot happy, yeah? <laughs> Miss Hellboy, yeah. got, uh like to speak to you privately a minute? Of course. Excuse us, boys. Uh, come right over here. Yeah? Are you serious? Is this really a retention farm? Yeah. Well, you may think me a snob, but I draw the line at moving in with a bunch of crooks. Oh, these men are my good friends. Now, wait a minute. I don't care what they are to you. I'm not sharing a bunkhouse with them, and that's final. Oh, well, if you would rather, you may sleep outside on the ground, but you yourself must choose. Looks like you win another round. Good night, Ross. Good night, boys. Good night, Miss Good night, Miss Oh, I would like to say, this is Ross Morton's first shop, and I know you will help him, as others have helped you. Good
Hey, come on, you guys! Somebody turn on the lights! Shut up, I don't see why you can't turn them on. Put on the lights up! All right. I could get killed around here before you guys would listen to him. I thought you were practicing for the Golden Gloves Championship for excitement, like Junior said. All right, come on, what's oh. going on? Boys, boys! Just I a minute, in. just a minute. Well, I can see everybody. Wait a minute. Okay. What is wrong? I hear noise all the way to the main house. I found this character going through the pockets of my pants. Imagine trying to steal from me. Is this true? All I wanted was the keys to the Jeep. Look, us boys are expert at escapes. Let's not have any more of these kindergarten breakouts. I wasn't trying to break out, as you put it. I'm just not used to going to bed so early, so I, I thought I'd take a ride into town. Oh, I, see. I didn't realize I was a prisoner, too. Oh, no, no, you are not. You are free to go, so long as you're back in time for work in the morning. Oh, Miss Helberg, you can't let... Please, Pete. Charlie, give him a kiss. Oh, wait, Charlie. Miss Helberg, I wish you'd listen to me when I'm right. I do, Pete. But right now, you are wrong. Uh, give him the keys, please. Yeah? Gee, thanks. Well, what time do I start work in the morning? Right after breakfast. Good enough. Yeah. Breakfast is at 5 a.m. The next day was a long one for Ross. Possibly the longest of his life. His hands were not yet used to farm work. And late in the afternoon, Inga did what she could to ease the sting. Oh, no, don't move, Ross. Maybe this will prove to you I'm not cut out for farming. Don't be discouraged. A man must have blisters before he can have calluses. Who wants calluses? My father. My father was very proud of his calluses. They are good farmers' yules, he used to say. Yules? <laughs> he, he meant jules. Ah, he was a wonderful man, my father. Well, hi, Junior. Are you going out on the town again tonight? I might. Oh, don't tease, Pete. Uh, may I move this, Miss Hobart? Yeah, I'm all finished. <clears throat> Did uh, Charlie pick up the rye and the barley seed? And the seed drill you're running will be here at dawn. Oh, good. Then we plant tomorrow. Oh, it's always a good day when we trust seed to the ground. Yeah. Miss Helborg, uh, you mind if I operate the seed drill? You know how to do it? Oh, sure. Good. I'm glad to see you take interest, Ross. Of course, it could be. He just wants the softest job. Oh, Pete. His hands are very sore. It will be better if he runs machine. He can wear gloves. You run the drill. Gee, thanks, Miss Helborg. You're welcome. Yules. Inga has often told me that a farmer's greatest thrill is the harvest. But the second greatest comes the day the seed goes into the ground. And as a rule, at the end of the day, there's a feeling of deep peace. This day, however, was destined to be an exception. Ross. Get up from there, you. Pete. Show him what you found in the barn. You know what this is? I think it's rye seed. It's rye seed, all right, and there's a lot more of it in the barn. You didn't even put it in the seed drill, did you? Hey, what's wrong with him, anyway? Of course I didn't put the rye seed in the drill. I only used the barley. You did not know that the purpose of seed drill is to plant the rye and the barley together? No, I didn't know. One punch at him, that's all I ask. Pete, I don't see how anybody could be brought up in a farm area and not know anything about barley and rye. I told you I'd never make a farmer. Now, maybe you'll let me go back home where I belong. Ross, I have rented seed drill for 24 hours. We will plant the rye with the barley if we have to work all night. But the crop's never as good if you don't put the two in the ground at the same time. Then you do know something about farming. Now can I hit him? No. Why did you do this to me? I got news for you, Miss Helborg. He doesn't care what happens to the crop. He probably figured if he goofed off enough, you'd be glad to get rid of him. Is he right, Ross? 
All I wanted to do was to get away from this place. Oh, I see. Rain. Oh, no. Do you know what rain means, Junior? It means the folly's gonna sprout right away. It means we won't have time to put in the ride. What are you gonna do now, Miss Helborg? We do... We do best we can with barley alone. And if... If all goes well, we harvest it for seed. Well, there's good money in seed. Yeah. Yeah. And if all don't go well, what then? I'll tell you what she'll do. She'll go up to her room and pray. Boys. I know I don't have to remind you. No fighting. I wish she hadn't said that. Good afternoon. Miss Helborg, it is not a good afternoon. Oh. Oh, come in. Come in. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, something is wrong? Something is very wrong, Miss Helborg. Oh? Well, your thoughtlessness, Miss Helborg, may have ruined my son's life. How? You led me, his own father, to take a step that may have ruined his character beyond repair. But how, sir? By allowing a boy of his age to live, eat, work, sleep in a place like this, side by side, with criminals of the worst sort. Oh, Mr. Morton. I, I, I do not know, but I think Ross has learned many good things from this man. I, I call him. I call him. You wait right here. You see. Yes, see. Yussie, tell Ross Morton I would like to see him right away in the living room. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's coming. Miss Helborg, I just can't get over it. A young, unmarried woman running such a place. Yeah, you are right. I am unmarried woman, but I am not running such a place as you have called it. I am running Hellborg Farm, his good farm. And the people on it are good. I just don't understand you at all. You want to see me? Yeah, your father, Ross. Oh, Dad. Hello, Ross. What gives? I've come to take you home. This has gone far enough. Take me home? Oh, but Miss Hellborg, with the, with the drought and the irrigation and all, well, well, we're up to our necks in work. Yeah? Well, how about it? Oh, you must listen to your father. I'm not going to permit you to stay here any longer. Look, son, Miss Helborg can keep the money I advanced her. So your obligation to her is dissolved. You can even have a new sports car if you want. A little Italian sports car like we saw at the auto show? Yes, if you wish. Oh, gee, Dad, that's great. Ross. You have done good work here. Well, let's face it, Miss Helborg. I've caused you nothing but headaches. <laughs> well, as far as a farmer's concerned, we both know I'm a complete farce. We all must have our failures. And it's a good thing, too. Because it's from our failures, we learn how to succeed. <laughs> I'm afraid that's a little too deep for me. Well, uh, a little child does not learn to walk right away. No. He tries, he fails, he tries again. And oh, he will have many failures before he finally becomes a man. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, son. I don't feel right about this. But all I can think about is that, that little Italian sports car. <laughs> Yeah, I see. Well, you yourself must choose. Well, are you ready, son? Oh, sure. Goodbye, Miss Helborg. Goodbye, Mr. Morton. I have to be in town by seven. Come along, son. Goodbye.
Goodbye, Ross. And so Ross Morton left the Helborg farm. But the drought did not. Each day the barley fields grew more parched, and her lone hope of harvesting the barley for seed grew every hour more dim. Pete, she come back yet? No. How's the meeting go? Oh, not so good. Why? What do you mean? Well, uh, young Niels Larsen was there. Oh, thank you, Charlie. And uh, he explained uh, that there must be a proper cloud formation before aeroplane can make rain. And he said that we must pay pilot and plane to stand by for days, maybe, waiting for proper conditions. A farmer cannot risk such expense at this time of year. You mean, uh, well, that work we did? <laughs> All for nothing? Is he right, Miss Helberg? Is it goodbye to the farm? <sighs> Go to my room. Oh, hi, Mr. Cabot. Hi, Pete. Hi, Charlie. Well, come on in, Ross. What do you want? I'd like to speak to Miss Helborg. Well, she's got enough to worry about without you bothering her. Well, this is important. Look, Junior, why don't you run along and play with your toys? Now, wait a minute, Pete. Listen. What's that? That's what he wants to talk to Miss Helborg about. Now, would you mind calling her, please? Miss Helborg, Mr. Cabot's here. Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, Ben. I am very good. Ross. Well, hello, Miss Helborg. I came to tell you that the drought's just about over. I've had that plane standing by for days, just waiting for the right cloud formations. And you know, the pilot said today they couldn't be better than they are now. Oh, Ross, I... <laughs> First time in my life, I guess I, I stopped to think. <laughs> and you know what occurred to me? That there's more important things to live for than Italian sports cars. Amen, huh, Pete? You bet your life, amen. I see. If my work clothes are still out in the bunkhouse, I, I guess I better get into them. Ross, you really want to work? Oh, sure. And you're going to need all the help you can get now. Oh, yeah. Oh, and besides, it, it'd be a shame for these calluses to go to waste. <laughs> After all, they're my Yules. <laughs> oh, Ross. Oh, Ross, you make fine men. Now go, go. is God's gift to us. What we become is our gift to God. Well, good night. <laughs>